Today we're going to learn how to graph log functions, and up in the left-hand corner here we have the log function. Let me just trace over it. Notice that the, uh, y the asymptote is the y-axis, so there it is. And the x-intercept is at 1. In our first example, we have the log of negative x, and we've learned that reflects the graph uh, in the x direction across the y axis. So if the graph, if the x intercept was at 1, now it's at negative 1, and it's facing the opposite way, but we still have our asymptote as the y axis, and so there you go. In our second example, uh, we have, we're going to graph negative the log of x. In this case, we have the natural log, but that shouldn't change anything. The original y-intercept is, uh, is still at 1, but now we've learned that we are going to reflect this graph in the y direction across the x-axis. So the x-intercept is still at 1, and it's been reflected across the x-axis. So that's the only difference there. Um, and anytime you put a negative sign in front of a function, it always reflects itself across the x-axis, which is in the y direction. In our next example, um, we are going to, uh, in this case, you notice you have the log of x minus 2, which moves the graph down two units. So we do know that our original x-intercept is at 1, and we don't really know where our uh, new x-intercept will be, but we do know that when we move the graph down, Uh, I just made a mistake, I'm sorry. We do know when we move the graph, it will cross the x-axis somewhere. It looks something like that. But the old x-intercept has moved down two units. So here is the original x-intercept. It has now moved down two units. And if this is negative 1 and this is negative 2, this point at 1, 1 comma negative 2 will be on the graph because the whole graph has moved down two units. And then, of course, the question is, where in the world does it cross the x-axis? In order to find that out, we need to realize that the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. Um, so all we have to do is set 0 equal to our original function. And... We just have to solve this log equation. If we add 2 to both sides, we get 2 is equal to the log of x. And we have learned um, that in order to solve this, we want to change it to an exponential function. So this means that 10 to the second power is equal to x, which means x is equal to 100. And that is going to be our x-intercept. So this point here, it's not, it's not in proportion, as you can see, but that point should be at 100. It actually should be further out to the right, um, but I wouldn't have been able to fit it on this graph. So the x-intercept is 100 by simply setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. In our last example, we are doing two transformations, and I'll do this in two different colors. First, we're going to graph log of x minus 5. So that's going to move the graph five units to the right. If our original x-intercept is at 1, our new x-intercept will be at 6. And it would look something like that. That would be the log of x minus 5. If we now want to move the graph up two units, we take the x-intercept here at 6. We know it's going to move up two units to 2. And the graph, we don't know where it's going to cross the x-axis but it's going to look something like that. And this is going to be the graph of y equals the log of x minus 5 plus 2. And notice this point here at 6 comma 2 is on the graph. And then the only other question is, where is the x-intercept? So let's move some things out of the way so we have room. Let me move this down here. And we'll move that around here. And if you remember to find the x-intercept, we need to set y equal to 0. So once again, our goal is to find 
where this point is right there. So we go 0 is equal to the log of x minus 5 plus 2, subtract 2, subtract 2. We get negative 2 is equal to the log of x minus 5. And using our uh, rules for logs, we know that this is the same thing as the exponential function. 10 to the negative 2 is equal to x minus 5. You should remember that 10 to the negative 2 is really 1 over 10 squared. And that's really 1 one hundredth, which if we express it in decimal form is 0 0.01. So now if we add 5 to both sides, We finally will get, let's move this down a little bit more because it's in our way. Let's move it down just a little bit more. It's not cooperating with me. There it goes. And now we'll add 5 to 1 tenth, which, um, to 1 one hundredth, which gives you 5.01, and that is equal to x. So this value right here, this is your x-intercept. So this point right there is 5.01. So just to re reiterate what we did here, first the graph moves five units to the right, which is where we got our 6 as an x-intercept. And then we have to move the graph up um, two units, and that moves, that point that was on the, the x-intercept moves up two, and that's where we get our six comma two as being on the graph. And by the way, this six that was here should have been over just a little bit more, because that's where the intercept was, so let's correct that. And our last step is to find the actual x-intercept, so we simply set the, the function equal to zero, and that's all the way on top here, and then we solve, and we finally get the x-intercept is at 5.01. I hope this was useful, and we'll see you again next time.